Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today I am around Plateau Mont Royal area in Montreal. I love these murals. And today I'm going to check out the new cafe that I found on Google Map. It's called La Touche Cafe. And here I'm walking in. The view outside the cafe window is pretty inspiring. The sky is opening up. It's very uh, quiet in here, just me enjoying my cup of latte and a pastry item very similar to a croissant. As always, I sketch my cup of coffee and pastry. And now I'm moving on to sketch the view outside the window. So the speed of this drawing process is four times faster than my real-time drawing speed. So I just began with the corner rooftop area of the building. It's kind of like a, um, a lamp shape in the cylinder and some more birdhouse structures of the attic area. And then the floor below was another rectangular window and the frames. Now, before finishing the bottom part of the building, I'm beginning to draw um, people. Just so all of a sudden, this building looks so much more larger with these people underneath. And then drawing these banners of the stores and restaurants. Adding some accentuation around the window and display window frames, a little hatching. And here I got the bottom of this building. It's a little bit higher than these people's shoes. Adding some more display window frames. And just drawing as many details as I could see that if I could feel is important inside those display window frames and adding another person. Yeah, just trying to capture their walking gestures from memory because they just walk past by so, so quickly in about like three seconds. And then adding more triangular brackets for the rooftop structure. Color in the window areas with black ink to show density of the interior. A lot of um, repeating shapes and rectangles, the frames inside, it's pretty easy to draw because I know how to align these on the same horizontal line. This is my uh, technique of drawing architecture. Is that once you start drawing one or two windows, you know where the rest of the windows are aligning on the same horizontal line. And adding some rooftop structures, a really nice pattern. And kind of drawing this division line between this building and the one on its right. Another window, color in with solid black ink, just so there's a sense of depth. There's a space behind the window. Adding another person. Finishing the bottom line of these two buildings. And it's just getting easier. Just fill this large chunk of building square with more windows. And the lamp post right here. more windows. So these are not actually perfectly aligning on the same horizontal line. This is how uh, this architect was designing this building. Adding some more borders and banners, little roofs, canopies for the stores on the ground level. And now I kind of move on to the left side to add um, the balcony areas. Platforms that stick out on the left side. And this is the entrance to a store. Adding another person. Yeah, so the windows on this very left side are being extremely foreshortened because they're bending away in a pretty sharp angle. 
and using very loose and gentle pressure to add a bit of brick texture for the exterior of this building. So I'm still using my 0.8 fine liner pen because I'm using uh, gentle pressure and quick movement. The lines I'm creating for the bricks are very gentle and almost invisible. So they're not competing with outlines. And adding a bit more. Drawing the, uh, the curb line and the thickness of it. Perspective here, dividing each concrete piece and adding some foliage forms on the left, a traffic lamp and cars on the bottom. And moving on, I am comparing the height of this building in relationship to the main building on the right. And I'm just keeping the contour outlines really simple and just capture the bare essence of this building because it is in the distance. When we're drawing objects in the distance, we don't have to be as clear as drawing the ones in the foreground area. We can already tell that these are like two buildings on the other side of the street. Too much detail is just going to grab too much attention from the main building. And adding some final accentuations and hatching, that's it. Here is a look of my finished line work. It took me about like 20 minutes to draw. Okay, so because I think it was Halloween and this cafe had to close early uh, than usual, so I was kicked out. So I had to find like a piece of cardboard and sit on the sidewalk to finish my painting. So the painting process is gonna be in real time speed without any editing. So I'm just beginning to wet the sky area with a bit of clear water. And so the blue could spread out nice and smooth without any dry brushing marks. So I just grab a bit of um, cerulean blue, dilute it a little bit. The pre-wetted surface is also diluting the cerulean blue into an even more translucent town. I'm using these uh, brush strokes to show the, um, the mix of sky and soft pieces of clouds. So in general, the tones around the horizon of the sky is, could be a more of a more pale tone and also in smaller brush strokes because those areas of sky are actually very far away from us. The clouds and sky colors are looking very thin, but for the top part of the sky, I'm using pretty generous br brush strokes to get these large chunks of sky done. The color uh, light yellow in between the blues are actually the thin clouds. Grabbing a little bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of royal purple to get this shade color of clouds around the horizon using pretty thin brush strokes. This area is further away from us. And this part is closer to us on top. So the sky is actually an inverted sphere and the very top part of it is actually pretty close to us and the, the part close to the horizon is very far from us. And now I'm just wetting the uh, sidewalk area with a bit of, um, uh, with a bit of uh, yellow ochre to show the sunshine reflecting onto the concrete. The concrete is not just bare gray. And so adding these warm Cadmium yellow and lemon yellow for the uh, lights inside these stores. And just wetting the exterior of this building with a bit of clear water. Mixing orange and red together. And use these pretty quick and generous brush strokes to get the coloring done without over stirring. So when we're painting an area, it doesn't have to be like 100% even. There could be a slight bit of difference of tones depending on uh, more or less water mixed into the paint. Let it dry and I just grabbed a little bit of uh, raw umber to uh, paint this building on the side. 
be the leftover yellow orange. And grabbing a little bit of uh, raw umber to paint the rooftop area of this corner building. Nice and light. So for watercolors, we could actually save a lot of paint by uh, not over rubbing these cakes and mixing quite a bit of water. So we have, you know, most of the time, all we need is actually a quite translucent paint on paper. And so my palette, I've been using it for like over one year and six months. And a lot of colors are still lasting for a long time because I know how to save these paints by not uh, rubbing on the paint too much. I actually use quite a lot of water. Let's just paint it in those window area with leftover ultramarine blue, reflecting the color of the sky. Some more blue for the banners of the stores. A bit of leftover brown to give a cast shadow for the curb. And especially in the beginning, uh, beginning stage, I like to keep my watercolors pretty transparent. So it's just gonna be easier to add some denser colors later on, easily giving contrast. So now moving on to the next layer, grabbing a little orange, red, and burnt sienna. And this is the second layer for this corner building. Wet into moist, so there's no harsh brush strokes. As you can see, I'm leaving tiny little gaps of the first layer unpainted. Just use these horizontal uh, brush marks, giving a kind of illusion of pieces of bricks this way. And again, it's not, a, uh, it's not an even wash. I want some of the brush strokes to be a bit visible to give a sense of pieces of bricks. So don't be afraid of painting on location because most people just pass by, they don't really care. And so this is how I layer with watercolors. First layer is always super watery. And then as I move on to the uh, second and third and fourth layer, most of the time, this is like a wet into wet. So it's, I'm not super conscious of the layer, how many layers I'm really doing. I am just kind of adding the definitions uh, wet into wet or wet into moist. Giving it more vibrancy by mixing in a bit more red and use shorter brush strokes to get more refined texture of the bricks in. Yeah, so the brush strokes are a little shorter compared to before. Also leaving gaps of the previous layer. All right, I think one of the common problems of people painting watercolors is that they only paint one layer of a super watery town of a certain color and they don't move on to laying more layers of denser colors. So this is how I work on that. I move on, I get more brave with bold colors on top. And I think that's pretty much it for the exterior of this main building. It's time to move on. I just, so I just grab a little bit of royal purple, mix it with a leftover blue to paint these gray banners. And I think the rooftop area needs a denser raw umber. So this is the same color as the first layer, but it just contains less water. And also now I'm adding on the second layer, I'm creating contrast of these two different tones of the same color. For watercolors, you don't have to mix so many colors or you don't have to buy a palette with 72 colors. I think all we need is about 12 colors and just play around with different man water. So it's getting this gray in around the, the display window areas here and there. Some more stronger 
springs containing less water for this building. Second layer. And use these horizontal brush strokes to show a sense of bricks. And overall, these two buildings in the back, the color is more pale compared to the main building in the front. Because if, if, my, if I make those too strong um, in super strong density, they're going to compete with this main building in the front by coming forward. So I want those two smaller buildings to be pushed back by not overpainting them. Adding some stronger brown tones here and there for this main building. And so when painting pretty much anything, it's very important to have like a sense of focus. So my focus is this foreground area, uh, the sidewalk and this main building and the people. And so I'm spending a lot more time and effort drawing and painting this area. Adding a bit of shadow using the leftover gray that I mix with blue and royal purple. The shadow underneath these people's shoes. Yeah, so the, uh, the weather is kind of overcast. And so the shadows are very gentle. Some stronger grays for the banners and the interior area. And because this is a real-time painting process, it seems like I'm moving pretty slowly and that's okay. Um, there's no need to rush. I think watching videos on YouTube, uh, we, of we often get an illusion that people tend to paint really fast because a lot of videos are like in time lapse. So I'm making this painting process in real time for you so you can have a sense of my real time painting speed. Just grabbing a little bit of uh, green and blue to get a turquoise color for these triangular structures around the attic and the eave, top part of the roof. A very nice vintage turquoise color. Some more here. And sometimes I do need to pause for five to 10 seconds to keep observing and see what other colors that I need to add on before calling it done. So there's some more green towns on the street. And a bit of raw umber. Just get stronger shadow here around the curb. And some more pauses. Yeah, I don't want to cut this part off because I want to make my painting process really realistic for you. Is that I am a human too and I can't paint like a machine. I need to take my time to think before moving on to the next little step. So I just grab a little bit of turquoise to, to paint these areas inside the display windows. Just so it's a nice play of uh, turquoise and the yellow lighting there and paint this man's outfit with red. Some more leftover turquoise for this person's outfit. Most people nowadays, they like to wear uh, black jackets or even black pants. So I'm just making these colors more interesting by using blues and purples instead of black. and adding some more stronger shadows on the bottom edge of the building, around the curbs. So the colors tend to fade away a bit after it dries. So I like to add some more retouches when I see some of the tones are fading away a little bit after it dries. Yeah, just one last bit of polish for these buildings, slightly warmer, um, orange browns and that's it here is the look of my finished sketch 
So in total, the drawing and painting process took me 45 minutes to complete. And this was actually a bit challenging experience we had because I had to be completely out there. Actually, only one woman just passed by and, and um, look at what I was doing. And that's it. Most people just pass by without really caring about, about what I'm doing. And people are going home. I'm just looking at some of the squirrels at the park. They're so naughty. Always begging and waiting for food for you to feed them. See you next time, everyone. Have a great day.